So I hear you have a new CD out? <laughs> I'll be out in the lobby after service ready to autograph that for you. That was Moonlight Sonata. Beautiful job. Thank you so much. Fred tells me that next week we're going to have the sequel to that called Moonshine Sonata. <laughs> I look forward to hearing that. Okay, super. Well, this is week four in our series, Daring to Live the Empowered Life, and we have been looking at how we can remove the blocks and the things that stand in the way of us expressing authentically in our life and showing up and bringing our whole self to the game of life. So I was thinking, being Halloween and all, about uh, a couple years ago, I went to Worlds of Fun with my kids, and you know, they have the haunted Halloween that goes on this time of year, and they set up various haunted houses and um, little outdoor places you can walk through with scary things. And you know, I'm not a big fan of the haunted house. I really don't get this concept. Those of you who like this are gonna have to explain it to me because shoving yourself in a completely dark room and waiting for something to come out and scare you just doesn't seem like entertainment to me. I mean, you know, don't we face enough fear in our own lives every day <laughs> without, you know, but, you know, feel free to, to tell me what you enjoy about that. Um, but I was game, and so we went through, you know, Dracula's castle, and then we went through the graveyard, and I refused to go into the whole scary clown thing because that's just too much. <laughs> but we were going through this one outdoor area that took you through the woods, and it was called Camp Gonna Get You With a Hatchet. So you can just imagine the scenes that awaited us as we walked through this area, you know, the, the blood and the gore and the things that would leap out at us. And, and there was this one area that had um, netting, and so it created this sort of walkway that you had to, you know, walk through the netting and let it guide you. And of course you knew there was something in there waiting for you before you got out of this thing. Well, I should preface this story by telling you that I'd been boxing for a couple years for fitness. You might see where this is headed. <laughs> so something jumps out at me. I don't even know what it was because I didn't take time to look. I just automatically decked him <laughs> right in the nose. I didn't mean to. It was an automatic reaction. <laughs> And so here this poor kid who's just making some money working at Worlds of Fun rips off his mask and is holding his nose and yelling, you got me! <laughs> and so, you know, let's, there's a couple lessons in this. One, don't jump out and scare me. <laughs> You're taking your own life in your hands. And he was okay. I did make sure of that. But secondly, you know, Here's this thing that appeared so scary that once he ripped off his mask was just a young kid working at Worlds of Fun. You know, we're often, we often think we have these masks that hide us, but sometimes we're the only ones that don't see them. You know, as I shared a couple weeks ago in um, Psychology Today, they said that um, when someone's being inauthentic that you actually have a physical reaction to that. Your blood pressure goes up, you sense it. We know when someone's not being authentic with us, and we know when we're not being authentic ourselves. So we've been looking at how to live in the arena and what life in the arena looks like as we're challenged to show up as our whole self, to fully engage and fully be present in our lives. And, and we have to look at what this looks like on the spiritual path. And I want to talk about that today because you know, being spirit-led is one of our core values as a community. Being spirit-led, that means we listen to our guidance. We trust our intuition. We take things first in prayer, and then we give ourselves over to the process. Well, that seems all well and good until we're invited to really step into our fear, or we're guided to do something we don't know how to do or that's bigger than we think we're capable of or even more when we're asked to step into the unknown, when all we can see is that step before us, but we don't know where it's taking us. And we have to take that leap of faith and we have to trust. That takes courage. You see, we're always being called higher. 
We're always being pulled towards our more evolved self, towards a more authentic way of expressing. And it's not a path for sissies. And I apologize if that term brings up any shame issues for you. You can talk about that in your Wednesday night circles. <laughs> but it's a path that takes courage. And I believe that we're on the verge of the unknown, but on the verge of something great. We're being called higher, as Stacy said last week. So I wanted to share a little bit about my story because some of you have been curious how I got to this point in my personal journey, not having started there when I came to this community. I won't go back as far as, you know, I was born in a small city in Illinois. We'll save that for another time. But you know, I had just come out of three years of what I could term a dark night of the soul. It was a time with a great deal of loss and change and grief that included losing both of my parents, my mother after a series of strokes, my dad after a challenging walk with Alzheimer's disease. And at the same time, a lot of personal letting go and change was happening for me. And what that time did was really bring me to my knees. It asked me to let go of anything out here that gave me any kind of security, that gave me an identity, and to really call upon what was in here, to look at what sustained me when everything else out here fell away. There was literally nothing in my life that didn't change during those three years' time. And so as I was getting to the other side of that, the opportunity came to come here. Brian Grandin, who was serving as a ministerial student here, was standing in my office. I had um, listened to his credo and was giving him evaluations and feedback on that, and so we were talking about that, and he happened to mention there was an opening here for an associate position. At the same time, my phone was ringing, and I didn't know until later it was Reverend Patricia saying, hey, you know, we've, we're going through this change. Could you maybe come and help us out a little bit in the interim? Well, something in me when I heard those two things pulled me. Something came alive in me, and I thought, wow, the opportunity to come back and serve the community that I love. On a ministerial, ministerial team that included a man like Bob, who had so many years of experience, and a woman that I already loved, and respected greatly. And so I came and I interviewed. And throughout the time, I took it into prayer and I was pulled. And in my final interview with Reverend, with Reverend Patricia for the associate position, she asked me if I was serious about this position and I said yes. And she shared with me that she was going to be leaving. She wanted me to know that coming in. And although my answer had been yes in that moment, it became yes. I didn't know why at the time. I thought I was coming here to serve in a supportive role. I thought that it was about supporting the change and the transformation that would happen during that time because that's what I do. That's where my gifts lie. And so I followed that content to support behind the scenes. Because you know, I'm comfortable being a leader, but what I know is being a leader means you have a willingness to step forward when it's your time to step forward and to step back and support when it's your time to step back. So I came here to support. You know, I've learned over the years that if you listen to your guidance, that you will always be brought to your good to your higher good. I stopped setting goals years ago because what I knew in that journey that brought me to my knees was that I could imagine something for my life. I could hold something out there, but spirit always had something better in mind for me, something I couldn't yet imagine, something I didn't yet know that if I took a step in the direction of, it would be revealed. And so I listened and I took note. 
I took note when, during our convention, Mary Umwake received the Light of God Expressing Award. And Patricia and I decided to get a picture with her, and after we did, she insisted on handing that award to Reverend Patricia and said, one day this is going to be yours. And then, after we completed that, she insisted on Reverend Patricia handing the award to me. And I went, hmm. I took note when, during our visioning process, the things you said you wanted for this community, the things you saw in our future being more involved in the greater Kansas City area, making a difference in a bigger way, and coming together in small groups and supporting one another in a more authentic and intimate way. All of those things that I heard you say were things that I too wanted, things that I wanted to support. And I took note. And I took note when so many of you came to me and asked me to consider applying for the senior minister position. Some of you, not so subtle, Diane. <laughs> I took note. It wasn't my intention coming in, but I was guided. I was guided to apply, and I did. It may surprise you to know that I don't really care about the title. I don't care about the job description. I don't care what role I play here. What I care about is you. What I care about is serving this community. What I care about is bringing the gifts that I have to give my whole self to this table. What I care about is supporting the transformation of the planet. And I can think of no better place to do it than here. What I care about is you. On Wednesday nights, um, you know, John and Christine Shuley have been organizing our Empowered Living Circles, and they've been doing such an amazing job. And um, when all of you go off to meet in your circle, we have a lot of time to amuse ourselves. So uh, this past Wednesday, we were joking about my new title, and I, um, you know, he has the same twisted sense of humor I do, John does. And so I told them that I really preferred the term Grand Goddess of UCOP. <laughs> so he's now taken to calling me G squared. And I had a little gift on my uh, desk this morning, all wrapped in many layers of duct tape with G squared on the front. <laughs> if I ever take myself too seriously, I invite you to remind me. <laughs> what excites me about this opportunity is that I believe we are on the verge of something great. You know, this is not about me. This is not about me and Bob. This is not about any one of us as individuals. That paradigm is shifted. What it's about is each one of us recognizing that we're leaders. Each one of us listening to that call that invites us higher. Each one of us coming together in a new and spiritually mature way to work together to make a difference in our community. We have heard what you're asking for. We heard you call us higher in this process. The board heard it. The ministerial search team heard it. And they began to realize as they listened to their guidance, as they watched things unfold, if they, as they took note as things went along, that we were all being called higher to create something new, something that's never been done before. None of us really expected it to happen this way. I know I certainly didn't. I think many of you knew before I did. <laughs> but here we are, on the verge of something more incredible than we've known before. And what we've known before is pretty darn good. So what's ahead of us can be no less than amazing. It's going to take all of us. 
individually and collectively. You know, Melda Shanklin, one of our great unity authors in the book, What Are You?, said, disquieting questions as to the why and the how of life cease when you begin to regard yourself as impersonal being manifesting as personality, spiritual beings having a human experience. You become immune to doubt when you learn that the impersonal is indestructible. You say, I feel the assuring presence of a vast good, a something indefinable but infinitely desirable. It draws me towards itself with an irresistible sweetness. In this feeling, you sense the eternal, changeless character of your being, which in the language of religion is called the spiritual you. As spiritual being, you have the identity with God, and because of identity, you feel the presence of God as a vast good, a vast good that is pulling us forward. Brene Brown says you can, be, you can choose comfort or you can choose courage. You can't have both. So this is going to require some courage on our part. And it may require us to get a bit uncomfortable. There may be some times along the way that our buttons get pushed. That's part of learning and growing together. That's part of relationship. Daring greatly will invite us to take responsibility for our reactions, to take it into prayer see what is there for us. There may be times that the board or the leadership makes decisions that you don't like. Daring Greatly will invite you to share and express your perspective with kindness and compassion, understanding the person that stands before you loves this community just as much as you do. There may be times we try something new as a community and fail miserably because we have to be willing if we're going to risk. Henry Ford's first car company failed. Bill Gates' first company fizzled out. Michael Jordan didn't make his high school basketball team. And Ben Franklin was completely broke before he rose to fame and fortune. If we're going to be in the arena, we have to be willing to risk. We have to be willing to try new things. We have to be willing to support each other in the journey even when we get uncomfortable. And we have to learn to laugh at our mistakes and walk through this with joy, to know that it's okay. It's okay to be human, to have our moments. But we also understand that there's something deeper that's calling us. This process that we're about to embark on, this new chapter in our community's history, is going to invite us to a greater level of spiritual maturity. We're going to have to walk our talk. We're going to have to walk our talk. We're going to be asked to have greater self-awareness. We're going to be asked to rise to greater levels of compassion and communication. But I think we're up for it. Because this community has always been on the leading edge, and we're not going to stay there by staying comfortable and doing what we've always done. We're going to go there by challenging ourselves to open up to the creative process that is calling us and pulling us forward, to enter into this grand experiment with joy in our hearts and excitement at what is possible that maybe we can't yet see but we're being invited to take the next step and each of us to show up as a leader in this community. Charles and Phil, Myrtle Fillmore didn't play it small. They didn't play it safe. Our way showers certainly didn't ask us to stand on the sidelines and watch. He invited us each to be who we came here to be. And when we do, it is up to us to write our stories on the arena wall to give courage to others who come behind us, to let them know that someone has gone before. And so there was a question that I was asked so many years ago when Mary Umwake did a visioning here. And I was sitting probably right about here where Derek is. 
And the question she asked is, what is yours to do to support the future of Unity Church of Overland Park? Little did I know it would end up with me here. So I ask you that question now. What is yours to do to support the future of Unity Church of Overland Park? But you know, we have a bigger question to answer as well. What is ours to do to support the future of our greater community to make a difference right here in the Kansas City area? And what is ours to do to support the transformation of the planet as it walks through our door one person at a time? What is yours to do today? What is ours to do going forward? So I would invite you to take out your affirmation card for this week. And as I shared with you last week, it seems that um, our affirmations every week are, are creating a picture. It's a picture of what it looks like to be in the arena, to know who we really are and to live from our highest self. So I'm going to invite you to speak each of the week's affirmations with me today. And they appear behind me on the board. I am enough. I bravely open myself to life and love. I allow myself to be seen and celebrate who I am. And I invite every moment to reveal my good. So it is. God bless you.